And first we begin with a drawing of an animal cell. So let's draw a nice little round structure here. Remember it's unspecialized, so we will not be doing any special shapes at this time. And what I just drew was the boundary of the cell. This would be your cell membrane, but we will label it later. And then we draw the largest part of the cell, which is your nucleus. And inside we'll put little squiggly lines. Right. And then we can add some mitochondria. Right. Remember singular is mitochondrion. So one of these is called a mitochondrion. One, two, three, four. Plural would be called mitochondria. And then we have some small spaces here that we call vacuoles. And that's it for an animal cell. So let's label it. Now notice my lines are very, very simple. Nothing too out of the way. All right. So let's label. Notice what I'm doing. My label line is horizontal. And the first thing I'm labeling is a cell membrane. Right. And the space inside the cell, in which everything is, is um, embedded, is called the cytoplasm. Even if I do this, I must end it horizontally. It's not a perfect line, but we'll work with that. Cytoplasm. And here we have one mitochondrion. So we name it mitochondrion. And we have this guy over here, our nice small vacuole yes. and we have two more things we want to label here we'll label it on this side and this is your new cleus yeah. and this the material inside the nucleus is called Chromatin. And I'll write a little note here, aka chromosomes. Okay. And later on, as we look at cells, we will see under what conditions we use the word chromatin. This is when we use chromosomes. And these are all the labels for an unspe unspecialized animal cell. And the last thing we do is we put a title. And there you go. Notice. It's all capital letters and underlined. So if you check back with the list of rules for biological drawings, you will see that this drawing follows all of the rules. Notice that when I put my label lines, they all line up. Yeah, they line up on either end. That's what's called justified. And that's your drawing of your animal cell, a typical animal cell. So we have our, outer boundary, because I always have the outer boundary. 
Now in this case, we have a double line making our outer boundary because a plant cell does not just have a cell membrane, it also has a cell wall. Another thing you'll notice is that the biggest part of the plant cell is not the nucleus, right? The animal cell. Instead, it has this large central vacuole, takes up the middle of the plant cell. Remember, in the animal cell, the vacuoles will be really small like this, right? In the plant cell, the vacuole is huge. And then we have our nucleus. Just like in the animal cell, you have your squiggly lines inside, your protein. And we also have mitochondria in the plant cell. Remember, mitochondria is one, mitochondria more than one. Yes. But there's something else that a plant cell has. It has this thing here. Notice the inside is not a zigzag like the mitochondria, but it's like little lines crossing the, the, the shape. And this is a chloroplast. That is where photosynthesis occurs. This is what makes plants green. Yes, and that's basically it in terms of parts. So let's label, remember, our lines end horizontally. And in this case, the outer boundary is called the cell wall. And then you have the inner part, that like the cell, like the animal cell, is called the cell membrane. And we also have cytoplasm. Remember, see how I'm justifying. And let's label the chloroplast. So we have our chloroplast. Yes. And we also have our white tool. On, dream, on, and remember singular mitochondrion, plural mitochondria. Did we miss anything? Yes, we have this huge vacuole, and this we call a central vacuole. And we once again have our nucleus. And we have our chromosomes. For the chromosomes, aka chromatin. Yes. Now let's take a look at, well, first let's write our title. So, Now, let's just look at some of the differences between an animal cell and a plant cell. So, what do we see here that we already saw with the animal cell? Think about it. Let's see. We had a nucleus in the animal cell as well. We also have chromosomes chromatin in the animal cell. We didn't have a cell wall in the animal cell. We have a cell membrane in the animal cell, a cytoplasm. We did not have chloroplast in the animal cell. We did have mitochondria in the animal cell, but we did not have a central vacuum. In the animal cell. So let's put a little key here. So 
so take for the also in animal so and not 